This lesson is about billing codes or work types. Uh, they call billing codes their work types. Work types is the one that you actually use within Autodesk as, uh, as using it in your time entry, but they are part under the billing codes. So that's why we call it like that. Where can you find these? Under admin, and then you go to the section finance, accounting and invoicing, and here's the section billing codes. Remember, we've been there before in a separate lesson. Uh, Today we're going to cover the first step of this on work types. You can take a good look already at all this, this setup. There's, there's a whole bunch of them that we already filled out in this one. If you start with, uh, with a brand new install, we would suggest to start with as little as possible because in this case, less is more. But once you start expanding your, your setup and also using more and more work types and, and uh, segregating your work, then of course it becomes obvious that you need more in here. Main important thing is that your you can set up all these kind of things and your technicians are the ones that really using these ones. When they perform work, they need to uh, choose the proper uh, work type when they do the time entry and make sure that they, uh, that they select the proper one. Now, when you have a whole bunch of in here, you can also make kind of exclusions. I'm gonna give you an example. For example, we have here the one that says workstation. I'm gonna quickly edit it so we can uh, see better what's in there. We call it a uh, workstation. You can even uh, allocate it to a department where it's only available. There's some counting uh, efforts that you put in there, but one that's kind of uh, explicit that you can uh, add to this one is you can either way exclude this one from new contracts. So let's say you have new contracts that you don't want to have any work performed on anymore. You can exclude it. But one that's also important is that your after hours work type is also being set up. Now this will only work when you have this after hours work type set up. This means when you have set up your business hours uh, in, the, in the system and the time entry exceeds those business hours, it automatically splits the time entry in two parts, one within the business hours and one within outside business hours with this new rate. This, is, this section is very important for your billing because you have a roll rate and the roll rate is going to be explained in a, in a separate section. Um, and here you can explain, okay, well, that particular roll rate it's the regular rate or for this particular work type is maybe specialized work. I'm going to uh, up that roll rate with multipliers or never bill less than half an hour or a quarter or an hour. Never bill more. I don't think you want to put that one and make sure that it's billable. I'm going to quickly go now to this after hours work type because this is where I showed you where you use it. But of course, to explain the after hours work type, you first need to have that set up. As you can see, this one is on the top. We can quickly go a quick edit. So this is the after hours rate. And basically what you do over here is that you have the roll rate and you should basically make this one here set up as 1.5 because otherwise the roll rate will not be expanded with that. And because it's after hours, you can also say, you know what? Okay, but that only goes in increments of half hours. So you put it one to 0 0.5 and then that roll uh, goes also. You can also say after hours is going to be a flat fee of maybe 250. So there's, there's several sections that you can use here, but uh, we say over here 150%. So this way we want to have it, uh, the roll rate by 150. Save and close. It will give you an impact. Everything that has not been posted will be automatically uh, updated, which of course you want to do. Now I also want to show you to create a new work type and uh, we usually call it uh, telecom and that's going to be used later on in the program because we're going to use this one on exclusion. So um, and we can maybe uh, in this case, uh, give it also an example with, with another one that we have here. Um, let's say telecom is excluded from new contracts because I don't want to have telecom. We're not going to do any contracts with that one. So that's why we're going to exclude it. Uh, regular roll rate. Uh, I can say, you know, this is a custom rate. This is specialized. Putting it 150, and no matter what role, no matter what person it is, this is the role where they have. Save and close. It gives you another message that it will be excluded from new contracts, meaning that this one won't be a default from contracts. So let's say you have a new contract and somebody performed work on telecom, then it's automatically being excluded and meaning it's being built. Now, in another section, I will explain you how you can ex uh, exclude certain kind of uh, Roll rates. For example, lately we've seen there's there's many clients that have now uh, only on site as an exclusion, meaning they only perform help desk plans. 
and with the whole help is plan only there's no on-site included the moment that we have to go on site we choose this particular work type and by choosing that one we have it excluded in the in the contract and then it will be built for a different rate um, i think that's all for today um, there's also one general comment that we also have to put in the consultancy and the compliance and the coordination those are also work types those are work types that you should not be using on a regular work entry what is client facing these entries are more for your internal time uh, to lock uh, to, to basically uh, allocate all the time that that you use during a day and there's times that you don't work for a client you work something else maybe something in in compliancy or internal some security uh, we will have another section where we explain it a little bit more but in general setting create a uh, an internal ticket or an internal project maybe even a project with a task per resource and you can use that one to track either way during the month or during the week or during the month or a quarter uh, on what amount of time was spent during that particular day on these particular items so that's why we have also some work types that are not truly end client uh, end user facing but they're more internal let me know if you have any questions go to our facebook group and then we'll uh, read your comments and reply back there